Mindfulness is a word we've heard a lot about in recent years, but what exactly is it and how can it help us? As single mums, we're always so busy looking after children, cooking, cleaning, maybe you've got a job as well. Are we actually making the most of our lives and in savouring moments at all, or maybe just parts of them? Well, I'm delighted today to be joined by Lynn Rossi, who's an expert in mindfulness and also a licensed clinical psychologist, and she's going to be telling us all about mindfulness. So hi, Lynn. Very nice of you to join us today all the way from America, even though it's over Skype. Yeah, well, thanks thanks for inviting me, Harriet. Well, it's great. Well, Lynn, you're an expert on mindfulness, and mindfulness is something that we've heard about for a number of years, but people might get the wrong impression about what it is. They might think it's sort of sitting in the corner of a room with crossed legs chanting something. So can you let us know exactly what mindfulness really is? Well, uh, mindfulness is really just about being present, uh, but being present in a particular way. Right, so oftentimes uh, people are thinking about mindfulness as well. I just have to be present. Well, but sometimes we're present and we're angry, right? Or sometimes we're present and we're resisting things. Or sometimes we're present and um, we really aren't very much at peace. So mindfulness is about being present uh, without judgment, um, with kindness and compassion. Um, so I mean, even if you're angry, you can be kind to yourself in the present moment, right? Which is kind of um, where mindfulness really comes in handy, right? So we can be with anything that arises both inside of our bodies and outside of our bodies with a kind of kind, open, curious attention. Okay, that makes sense. But on a practical level, um, day to day, how do we actually become mindfulness? I mean, you know, for example, like busy single mums are, you know, they're taking the kids to school, feeding them, washing, doing the laundry and that. How do they actually become grounded in that moment, as it were? Well, I think the easiest way of becoming grounded in the moment is to just connect with your breath, right? To be aware that you're breathing or to connect with your body and your breath, right? So if you're running around, you can still be aware of being uh, an inhabitant of your body. Um, And that's not something a lot of people do, right? We're caught in our heads a lot. So if you can just bring for just a moment your attention down into your body and feel yourself breathing and maybe take a little bit deeper breath, your body and your breath are always in the present moment, okay. right? Yeah, that makes sense, definitely. Okay, so when we're doing these things every day, we just have to suddenly, if we feel that we're getting stressed or upset for, for no a really good reason, then we just have to sort of stop, think about our breathing, be aware of it. Um, is there anything else that we can do to, to help get into yeah, that? Yeah, I, mean, I usually actually have people be aware of what, are you, what does your body feel like? So when you're stressed your body's going to be aroused, right? You're going to have tension in your shoulders. You're going to, you know, your, your breath is going to be accelerated. You might be hot. Um, your stomach may be a little upset. And all these are just signs of the fight or flight response going off. So be aware of that. And then be aware, what is it that you're feeling? I, and what are you thinking? So if you know what your body feels like and you know what you're thinking and you know what you're feeling, then you've dropped out of automatic pilot, right? Okay. Automatic pilot is that going around, not knowing, you know, going through the motions, and not being really aware of what's going on. Okay. So, I mean, right? I get, I so guess, if you check in, go ahead. No, I was just going to say that um, adding on to that is maybe about knowing what's normal for you and what feels right. And, and if you've got certain bodily symptoms that show that you're moving into a state of stress, maybe you're not in the stomach, or I know you start to sweat, something like that, that's just like a sign of, hang on a minute, you know, stress is kicking in, let's try and become mindful of the present moment. Yeah, and so in those moments, the feeling that you're having isn't going to be pleasant, right? So how can you, in that moment, go, oh, I'm feeling really frustrated, right? And just acknowledge it. If we can acknowledge it, we've stepped back from it a little bit. We're not in the middle of it, right? We've stepped back a little bit, and we're like, oh, okay, wow, I'm feeling really frustrated here. Let me take a breath. You know, I'm thinking... I'm never going to get through this day or I'm never going to get it all done. Those are kind of common things that people are thinking, right? Yeah, absolutely. And so just re- realize that you're caught in that and step back and go, okay, hold on. Just let me take a breath. Okay. I oftentimes have people think about a big stop sign, okay. right? So if you can think about a big stop sign, at least here in America, they're red and they have S-T-O-P written yeah, on them. I, I guess, it's, is it the same in, your, in yeah, England? Yeah, I, I see them in various places. Although I haven't got one in my house, I think I might have to get one of those. <laughs> Sounds a good plan. Yeah. So the stop sign is kind of when you're stressed, 
The S stands for stop. Okay, right? Yes. He's, he stands for take a breath. Okay. That's o stands for observe what's happening here. Right. And then if you take that moment to breathe and observe, then you'll be less likely to react and do and say something that you wish you hadn't. Okay. And you're more likely to respond. Ah, uh, okay. That's a good plan. So take a, a situation where you're, one of your children's really driving up the wall. You know, we've all been there. You're at breaking point. You want to throw something at them, and then later on you regret whatever you've done. How do we, in right. that instance, when you're really fired up, sort of just take a moment and stop? I mean, do you have to walk out the room, or what's the what's the best situ thing to do? Well, you may you may need to you may need to disengage. If, if you're if you're aroused, you know, in that kind of frustration, what you're going to say and do is not going to be a, is not going to be very skillful, no, right? No, no, because we, because um, physiologically, your thinking brain is not activated. Right. This is called your prefrontal cortex, right here. Yeah. And under those circumstances, it's not working, okay. right? So until you pull away and take a deep breath and kind of activate that executive functioning in your brain, mm -hmm. um, that part of your brain that can respond, you know, more skillfully, <laughs> it's not a good time to say anything. Okay. So step back. And you can teach your children this. Okay, so I have people that teach their children this. It's okay. really a wonderful thing. So I don't know if you've ever watched Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. I Did you guys ever get Mr. Rogers? Um, <laughs> I haven't watched it, I'm afraid, but it could be, if, you know, with all the channels you get, we've probably got access to it, but I haven't seen it personally. Well, it's yeah. an old, old show. It's an old, old show, and Mr. Rogers was this wise old man, and he had a children's show. Yeah. And you can look him up. But anyway, he yeah. said that if we can teach children that emotions are mentionable and manageable and I talk about this in my book okay. um, in this section on emotions okay. he said if we can teach children that emotions are mentionable and manageable we will have done a great service uh, to our children and their mental health yeah. and I would say it's the same for adults yeah. so if you along with teaching yourself how to manage your emotions mm -hmm. you're teaching your children at the same time yeah. It's a win-win. And then you just mentioned your book. Can you just give us the name of your book and where people can find it? Yeah, so it's called The Mindfulness-Based Eating Solution. Okay. Um, and it's on all your regular online retail, you know, Amazon and Barnes & Noble and all the, okay. I don't know. Do you get all of those at, we in do. England? Oh, yeah, we do. We're not that far behind. <laughs> no, yeah, we have those. <laughs> and I'll put a link, of course, yeah. to, to that um, underneath the video at the end. Um, and we're also going to be talking about mindfulness eating in a separate video, so I'll put a link to that under underneath this one as well. But um, what I also wanted to ask you, if, if people don't feel that they're particularly good at being mindful, how can they learn to become better at it? Well, so let me give you, there's two ways. Uh, one is more informally, right? Okay. So you can pick a routine activity that you do every day. So this is for the really, really, you know, person who's like, I don't have time to sit and, you know, like do this formal practice of mindfulness, which is meditation or something like that. Just pick something that you do every day and be present for it, right? Okay. So I ask people to, for instance, when you're taking a shower in the morning, okay. how many people do you have in the shower with you? <laughs> Okay. Right? Yeah, sure. Because you're thinking all the time about this and about that and about, you know, what am I going to get done and that. So just kick all those people out of your shower and just simply be aware of the water and the scents um, of the soaps and the temperature and, you know, the whole process. Just keep your attention on what's happening in the moment. Simply take a shower. Don't do anything else, right? So when your mind wanders, here's the instruction. When your mind wanders, you bring it back. Okay. When your mind wanders, you bring it back. Your mind is going to wander a thousand times. You bring it back to simply what's going on in the present moment. Okay. Um, and then if you keep doing that in different routine activities like making the bed or cooking a meal or eating a meal or doing the laundry or sweeping the floor, you know, if any of these things that you normally see as, oh, just things that get done and in the way of, you know, the more important things, yes. um, see that as a time when you really have the perfect opportunity to practice mindfulness. Okay, that's right. And presumably the more you do it, the better you become and the calmer you'll become in, in general. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. I mean, yes. I, I have actually yeah. done a, I think it was an eight-week course in mindfulness, which really helped me. 
Um, and now I try and practice it daily on, for example, when I take the dogs for a walk and I try and just let those thoughts go in and out of my head and just focus on the sounds and the trees and that sort of thing. And I find that a really therapeutic part of the day. Right. So I guess, I guess people could do a course like that. Is there, are there online courses available as well that maybe they could do? Yeah, actually there is. A colleague of mine that I actually did training with many years ago, his name is Dave Potter, right. he has a website called Palouse Mindfulness, okay. and that's that. P P P A L O U S E okay. Mindfulness, right. and he has a free online mindfulness-based stress reduction class um, that he has hundreds of people that go through it around the world, and it's just become, it's so popular, and he's done such a great job of of offering this free service. And actually, my yoga videos are on there as well. So oh, Wonderful. <laughs> there I'll you put go. links to that under this video as well, because that sounds an amazing um, resource. So that's super. Yeah. Okay. So, Lynn, before I let you go, can you just let people know how they can find out more about you? Yeah, so I have a website. Um, it's at lynnrossy.com, um, L-Y-N-N-R-O-S-S-Y.com. Um, and I have the information about my book and about the classes that I teach on there. And I also have free recordings on there, mindfulness recordings that anybody can download as well. Brilliant. Okay, well, that's super. Thanks so much for your help today. It's been fascinating for me, and I hope everyone else has found it as just as useful. And um, we'll be speaking to you very soon about another topic, which is mindfulness and eating. So thanks very much for joining us, Lynn. Okay, great. Thanks, Harriet. Bye. Well, that was Lynn Rossi joining us today from Missouri in the United States, and I learned an awful lot. I hope you did too, but if you've got any more questions about mindfulness um, that we can talk to Lynn about on another occasion, or perhaps another issue about any other area in well-being, then please get in touch with me, Harriet, H-A-R-R-I-E-T-T, at wellbeingexaminer.com, and I'll do my best to find an expert to chat to about it. In the meantime, please stay happy, healthy, single mums.